Hey everybody, Patton here. Today we're going to be taking a look at arcade games on the Sega Genesis Mini because apparently you guys are very interested in it. Before we get started, I have to give a huge shout out to BS Linnell and KMFD Manic. They gave me a ton of information I'm going to use in this video to help you guys out and get this stuff running. So if you see these guys, tell them hi and give them a big thanks. Let's get started. Before we get started with the actual tutorial, I want to go over some definitions and some information about arcade games. If you want to skip to the tutorial section, I'll have a timestamp right here and a link in my description. The best practice is to try and find a ROM set, not download individual ROMs. This is due to the different emulators being compatible with different ROM sets. As you can see in this table, MAME 2000 runs with the MAME 0.37B5 set, 2003 runs with the 0.78 ROM set, and so on. So when you download an individual game, you may not know what ROM set it belongs to, and that's going to make playing these games very frustrating. Some terminology on the type of sets you will find, because there's a few. You have split sets, and those are some ROM sets that are considered clones, or translations, or bootlegs that require a parent ROM set to run. In most cases, the parent ROM isn't the most popular or best working version of the game. But for a split set, you have to have the parent ROM or the game will not run. Here's an example of a split set. We have the parent ROM up here and then the child or the clone ROM down here. This is the BIOS file you need to play these games. If we open up the parent ROM, make note that we have nine files here. For the clone ROM, we only have one. And inside our BIOS file, we have a lot of files. So in a split ROM set, this is what you'll have. The parent ROM and a child ROM. Then you have the merged ROM set. This is where clones are merged into the parent ROM set, meaning that you have more than one game stored per file. So if we open up this clone ROM, we have the files from the parent ROM and the files from the clone ROMs are in separate folders. And then the BIOS is separate once again. Here's the problem with merged ROM sets. They are not supported in the Libretro cores. They will not work on your mini, period. Do not look for merged ROM sets because they will not work. Then we have the non-merged ROM sets. Once again, fewer files. All ROM sets can be used standalone because each zip contains all the files needed to run that game, including any files from the parent ROMs. But they still do not include the BIOS files. If we open up this one, You'll see that it contains the files from the parent ROM and the child ROM that we looked at before. All the files contained in one zip. Last but not least, we have the full non-merged set. In this set, all ROMs can be used standalone because each zip contains all the files needed to run that game, including any parent and child ROMs and BIOS files. If we open up this one, here's all the files that we saw with the parent and child ROM and the files we saw with the Neo Geo BIOS. So which one should you look for? Well, for the easiest time, you want the full non-merged set. That will give you complete ROMs. You'll have the easiest time playing these on your system. There's a really great Libretro document on how to get started with arcade games. I'll have that linked in my description for you to read on your own. It's a really good read if you want to find more about arcade emulation. I hope that made things a little bit more clear and I didn't confuse you guys even more. On to the tutorial. The first step is to hack your Genesis Mini. I'll have a tutorial video showing you how to do that in my description. Next you have to go to your modules tab and to the KMFD mod hub. Go to the RetroArch tab and select either the Ozone or the XMB version of RetroArch. Ozone will give you a switch styled menu that you'll see in this video. XMB will give you a PSP or PS3 styled menu. Once you've made your selection, click Download Module. Go to the Cores tab, and you can see a list of all the arcade cores that KMFD has included in his set. The core I've had the best luck with was MAME 2003 Extreme. You can try any of these cores out, but I'm going to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with all of them. I keep things simple, so I stick with 2003 Extreme. Once you've made your selection, once again hit Download Module. Close out the Mod Hub, go back into your Modules tab, and install Extra Modules. Put a check mark next to RetroArch if you haven't installed that already, and your choice of arcade emulator. Once you're finished, hit OK. At 
as for BIOS files, in previous videos I mentioned that there's a couple that you need. One was qsound.zip. BSLNL corrected me on this. We don't need that BIOS file for cores prior to MAME 2014. But for Neo Geo games, you do need the Neo Geo.zip BIOS. And you can put this in the archive with the other game files. What I prefer doing is putting it in the specific system folder so you don't have to do that for every game. So basically adding it like any other BIOS file. To do that, you wanna to go to your tools tab, open FTP client. Once this folder structure opens up, you wanna to go to ETC, Libretro, and system. Just drag the BIOS file right in here. Now it's time to add the arcade ROMs. Open up our ROMs folder. When adding arcade ROMs, they have to remain zipped just like this. Don't try and take the files out and add them separately. That will not work. The one thing you have to look out for is sometimes Hackchi will identify one of the files within the zip and it will think that file belongs to a different emulator. Most commonly, bin files. Taking a look at the full non-merged version of Baseball 2020 again, you'll see there's 37 files within this zip. When we go to add it into Hackchi, only three files show up, and that's because, once again, it's pinpointed the bin files and it doesn't recognize the other files. If you hit import as archive here, the game will not work. If you have something like this happen, close out the select file box, go to your file tab, add more games, as is. Select the file one more time, and now it's added correctly. You can highlight it and select your console and core in this menu. For other files, just drag them into Hackchi, and you'll see this file system here. Click Import as Archive. Select the console and the core, hit Apply, and Close. We're going to add the rest of these games real quick. One more thing I'll bring up real quick. When you have games like Simpsons that are four players, there's a couple versions of the ROM. You have the two player version or the four player version. When you're using the four player version, you are stuck with that specific character depending on what controller port you have. So with the four player Simpsons ROM, the first controller port will be stuck with Marge. If you're using the two player version, you're allowed to select your character. All our ROMs have been added, and I noticed the Neo Geo ROMs were the ones that were giving me the most trouble. It seemed like they were the ones that had the bin files, so with Neo Geo ROMs, you may want to be real careful and add those as is. Also, be careful with the amount of space you're using when adding these games. Usually, the games aren't very big. Some fighting games, though, they increase in size real quick. I only have a couple more things to go over, so let's head over to the Sega Genesis Mini. Man, this system is looking really good with all these arcade games. Before we get into it and start playing these games, the first thing I want to go over is the controller. The controller that comes with the Genesis Mini is not ideal for arcade gaming. You really need something different. Three buttons is not enough for a lot of games. You're way better off getting an 8-bit Doe controller or even a PlayStation Classic controller. That works perfect for these. Plenty of buttons on that controller. To show you what I mean, we're gonna start up the Simpsons arcade game. When you load these games up, you may get a RAM ROM check. This is perfectly normal. And then the game starts up. So from here, normally you would hit the select button on the controller to add a coin. We don't have a select button. I'm hitting every button on this controller, all of the buttons, and we cannot insert a coin. What you need to do is get into the RetroArch menu. In the quick menu here, you have to go down to the controls option. Go down a little bit more. This is where you can map your buttons. So let's go down to the C button. We can push left and right to change what this button does. We're gonna set our C button to insert coin. Let's go back to the game. There we go. Now we can add coins with the C button. We're gonna press start. Since we have the two player version, we can select our character. Let's go with Homer. This is one of the most fun arcade games that I've ever gotten to play. The problem is we can punch with the B button, but we cannot jump. Our A button right now isn't functioning as anything. So we have to go back to our RetroArch menu, go back to the controls option, and we have to change the A button assignment. So we're going to go left and right till we get to button two. Go back to the game. Now we can punch and jump. 
So with a game like The Simpsons, or any game where you only need two action buttons, the three button Genesis controller is fine, but again you are really limiting yourself to what games you can play. Pretty much no fighting games. Basically any game that needs more than three buttons assigned to it. I'm going to use a PlayStation Classic controller for the rest of this video. Let's start up a Neo Geo game to make sure that BIOS file went through correctly. Game starts up fine and looks really, really nice. Also something neat you can do with the PlayStation Classic controller or other controllers is access the menu by hitting the R2 button. And from here you can choose some different options, like cheats. In terms of which games cannot be played on these systems, any arcade game with 3D graphics will not work. No Killer Instinct 1 or 2. No Marvel vs. Capcom 2. No Primal Rage. No Mario Kart. No Laserdisc games like Dragon's Lair 1 or 2 or Space Ace. But that still leaves a ton of other games available to you. Let's test out a few more games and see how they run on the Genesis Mini. And there you have it, getting arcade games running on these mini systems has always been a fan favorite. And it's easy to see why. These are games that we never really got to play at home. We'd always have to go to the arcades and spend our money on these games. But now you can bring these arcade games to your home with the Sega Genesis Mini and Hack GCE. If you're having any issues or you have questions, I'll have the Rockin' the Classics Discord linked in my description. Once again, huge thanks to BS Linol and KMFD Manic. They've been a huge help with this video. And that's it for me. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Colon, Jordy Alex, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Den Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, and Batman.